We are currently in the Porsche Centre Bahrain to meet and have a chat with Mark Webber, the legendary Australian professional racing driver who is currently in Bahrain for the Formula One. Mark Webber, welcome to Bahrain. Good to be here, mate. Welcome back. Uh, how do you plan on spending your time here and do you have a car to get you around? Yeah, very, uh, very lucky to uh, receive a car from Porsche here in, from Porsche Bahrain, so a Panamera GTS, which is awesome to run around. Uh, not doing huge mileage in it, but uh, yeah, hotel to the track and, and maybe having a little bit of a look around. But um, yeah, it's nearly, I think it's nearly 20 years we've been coming to Bahrain for the F1 race, so uh, pretty extraordinary. And also at WEC with Porsche, we raced here a few times, wrapped mm -hmm. a world championship up here actually quite a few years ago, so good memories here in Bahrain. Obviously, you've been in the game for a long time and you retired in 2017. Um, what's one thing you miss and one thing you don't miss about racing? I think I miss a bit of the camaraderie, obviously, you know, working with a big team, it's always good fun to you know, work on big goals together, try and uh, achieve success together, have you done enough to beat the opposition, uh, and obviously when you achieve those results as a unit, uh, as a big team, it's super rewarding. Um, but I don't miss actually the, you know, I suppose, uh, staying on weight, you know, my diet, uh, huge amount of travel, of course. I'm still traveling a lot now, but not as much as I probably was when I was racing. Um, so just a little bit more balance between uh, family and professional life is, is something I'm certainly enjoying. What do you remember about your race during the first first Bahrain Grand Prix in 2004 and your last one here in 2013? Tricky question, yeah, 2004 would have been with the, with the Jaguar, so uh, I think we had pretty high degradation in the race. Um, I'm not even sure, I think we finished the race, I'm not even sure we did finish the race. Um, and yeah, my last race here with Red Bull in 2013, um, yeah, I think it was a, a pretty tricky result for me as well. Actually, it wasn't a happy hunting ground for me this race, uh, unfortunately, never got a podium here. One of the only tracks that didn't finish in the top three, so... Uh, uh, yeah, I'll have to try and do that next time, mate. But um, yeah, in another life. But yeah, uh, yeah it was. Um, I always enjoyed coming here, but the results weren't um, overly strong for me at this venue. Your first World Endurance Championship (WEC) title was set here back in 2015 while driving the Porsche 919. Um, is there anything you remember about that particular race? Absolutely, yeah, that race I won't forget. Um, yeah, it was a, a, a very challenging race for us. We had a bit of a, uh, an issue that we needed to manage with, um, with the car and uh, Timo and Brendan, uh, my two teammates, um, we had to work pretty hard to get that victory. Yeah, all the points obviously uh, allocated to, to close the World Championship out. Uh, mechanics did an amazing job during the race. It was a six hour, uh, six hour race back then. So we kept ourselves in the fight and, and finished the race and that was enough to get the World Championship uh, on our terms, which was awesome. So, uh, yeah, it was a hard, hard race and um, it was a nice celebration that night. So, uh, yeah, sure. team really deserved it. It was awesome. What led you to becoming a driver manager and a TV personality since your retirement? Yeah, well, TV was funny because I, I always thought that I would never, ever, ever do TV when I stopped racing because, um, you know, I thought that, and I've got mates that went into that when they were, when I was still finishing my career and they're doing a little bit of TV and media. I said, gosh, what are you doing? Like, you know, just... How you come to the races? What? Why is this of interest? Why and then, yeah, uh, yeah, like the idea of yeah. TV? Well, I just thought, you know, a lot of downtime, you know, travel, and you know, at the time it was like, definitely, I don't want to do it. And then I did a little bit of TV, and and, and quite enjoyed it. And obviously, I work with really good people, so it's fun. Um, and yeah, I get to, you know, I've got uh, other partners in, in in Formula One that I do work with, so it actually works out pretty well that I get to go and do a little bit of media go to some races and, and, and stay involved in the business uh, you know, quite well. Um, and that obviously is, uh, as well comes on with the management side of things to, in the other part of your question with Oscar, which was, you know, Oscar came through the junior categories in the last three or four years. He's obviously had tremendous success. And, um, you know, we have been, you know, supporting him where we can through those junior career, through his junior career, and then obviously Formula One now. Um, he makes his debut this weekend in, in, in Bahrain, which is pretty awesome with McLaren. What do you think are the challenges to drivers that are graduating from F2 to F1 today um, and how was it when you were making your way into F1? Formula One's always the biggest step. I mean, it's, uh, it's, the junior categories are great, but there's nothing, you know, like Formula One on so many different aspects. Of course, the travel is, is a lot, a lot, lot more intense. Uh, the, the marketing, the media side, the commercial side of the sport is, is very, very different from the junior category. So you've got to get used to that, which can, you know, you've got to manage that on your performance and if you just You've got to get used to that. It's very, very not daunting, but it's just something which is quite unusual. Um, and I suppose, I suppose, just managing the amount of people in your team. You know, in junior categories, you only have probably 15, 20 people. Formula One, you'll have 80 or 90 people 
you know, travelling with you. So I think the expectation and just how you operate as a profession, professional is, is very, very different. Um, so, but it was pretty similar in our day. Uh, you know, the, the, I suppose the biggest difference now is um, the cars back then technically were probably more advanced in some ways in a, in a bizarre, the, the gap was probably bigger now that the, the, they've sort of pulled the cars back by regulation to make them um, more for the drivers to to uh, to manage in terms of all the software and, and, and I suppose some of the techniques that they used to use um, so yeah it's it's a beast to take on your your first year is is, is, is a big year and um, yeah it's something that uh, Obviously, every driver looks forward to making your debut is pretty special. The last season saw three teams, Ferrari, Red Bull and Mercedes, in the top three. Which teams do you see rising to the top ranks this season? Uh, and who would be a driver to watch this season, apart from Oscar, of course? Well, I think Red Bull is still clear favourites. They're looking very, very strong. Ferrari also look, look pretty handy. Um, it's going to be interesting to see sort of that third, fourth, how that plays out with, with Mercedes, um, Alpine, uh, Aston Martin. Um, so yeah, that that sort of midfield group is 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 probably going to be quite a good battle in that in that section. But I think that Red Bull are the clear favourites. Uh, of course, young talent coming in. Of course, got a natural eye on Oscar. But obviously, Max is still someone that we all look back, look look to in all really, and sort of see how you know he's just on you know on top of his game, driving really really well. Uh, there's not many you know he hasn't got many. You know, chinks in his armory. Really, he's got so many uh, phenomenal strengths, and that's something that, as a as a fellow colleague and, and obviously professional back in the day, you sort of watch Max do his profession. It's pretty pretty impressive. Following in the audience of Formula One has massively increased, certainly with the younger dem demographics since a particular Netflix series, uh, which I don't know which year the first one came out. But have you seen any changes? to F1 as a sport since that's came out? I don't think the sport has changed a huge amount. Obviously, the way that we have uh, positioned the sport out there for the consumer has changed massively. You know, no question about it. You'll say the younger demographic, no question about it. Um, we're reaching, you know, a lot, uh, lot different demographic on that sense. Uh, never have we had more females watch the sport, which is awesome. You know, in my generation, it was not really skewed. Um, it was heavily skewed male and slightly older. Now uh, everyone has the opportunity to watch and um, gravitate to some of the heroes, whoever it is. Uh, uh, so that's that's really been a big disruptor for our sport. You know the, how you know the digital component has worked, and obviously with um, you know some of the online streaming um, have, have showcased the sport in a different lens, which has been quite fascinating. Um, so yeah, and that's just changing the times, right? And obviously the Formula One, we should be very proud of the sport in terms of the first mover. In in terms of to show how a sport can be pushed into different audiences to 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 understand a little bit more about it. It's a little bit cringeworthy, obviously, if you know if you're inside the sport. Obviously, it's it's uh, it's not the easiest to watch for people to to really understand it in an easy way to consume. Um, it's a good series. And lastly, what is your favourite Porsche model and your favourite place to drive it in, and why? I love the GD3 RS4 litre 997. It's a beautiful car, probably still my probably my favourite 911 of all time. Um, yeah, that's that's a beautiful car, and I suppose look, I think if you can in France, like I think in the Alps is very good. Uh, you know, it's always nice to have a mixture of a bit of motorway, but also you know, nice open roads, country roads is good, and you've got some good elevation changes, and and um, and also I think looking through the corner, some good visual, um, you know, visual. So open the line up and stuff. That's always a good experience. So Mark Weber, thank you very much. Thanks for your time. Thank you.